Meon de Aim Bon, Karen Anko Aka, Zoima Akoika, Goigu Ada, Norman Akil. I am happy to see you. My name is Karen Anko. My Kiowa name is Stone Woman or Strong Woman. I am a member of the Kiowa Tribe of Oklahoma and I live in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm a retired educator of 42 years and I'm here today to talk about my the history of my tribe. My name Anko is um, my husband's name and it is short for Anko Inhaigyama, which means in the middle of many journeys. My maiden name was Kiobong, which was a shortened version of Ketai Kiobong Ma, which means High Chief Rescued. The Kiowa tribe is actually a northern tribe. We came out of Canada around the 1700s. We called ourselves Tepa at the very beginning, which means com uh, coming out. Then as we migrated further south, other tribes called us Guda, um, which means pulling out. And then today we call ourselves Goigu or Kiowa. Um, we're a small tribe. We have 11,000 members. We're located in southwest Oklahoma uh, around Carnegie, uh, where our tribal office is, is Carnegie, Oklahoma. Our government, uh, we have a government, we follow a constitution, and uh, so we not only follow the United States government, but we follow our tribal governments. When we came out of Canada, we had seven family bands. Because the other tribes, like the Sioux and the Dakotas, were being pushed over into our territory, uh, we ended up in a battle with Sioux who destroyed one of our bands. So we ended up with six bands. Then, as we migrated further south into Wyoming, we had uh, two chiefs that got into a dispute over some buffalo or, or antelope. And so two of the bands went back north, and four of our bands came down through Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Texas Panhandle, and Oklahoma. We, uh, being a nomadic tribe, we traveled as far north as where we say the white bear was or the polar bear, which is way into Canada, around Saskatchewan. Then we traveled our, all the way, our warriors would travel all the way south into where they called the men in the trees, which were monkeys, which would have been in South America. So you can see we were very nomadic. We kept track of, in, well, we kept track of our um, history by pictorial, or pictures on buffalo hide. And we call them today calendars, but we have like four of them. And the, in fact, Anko, who is my husband's uh, great-grandfather, was one of the keepers of one of the calendars. And it, re it goes by the summer calendars where what was important to us was every year we gathered together for the Sundance. And in gathering for that ceremony, we kept track of our yearly uh, calendar by that time. We also followed the buffalo. The buffalo was very important to us. We used every part of the buffalo. And if you look over here, we have, I have brought a buffalo hide. The hide is very heavy. The women used to, the men would kill the buffaloes. The women would go and skin it, tan it. It became theirs after they uh, hunted the buffalo. We used the buffalo for everything. We used it for clothing. We used it for uh, food. We used it for uh, utensils. We used it for weapons. Uh, every part of the buffalo was used. It, I mean, the insides, the outsides, the hooves, the, even the horns was used. So the buffalo was very important to us. We followed the buffalo, and that's, we had to be uh, able to move fast and efficient 
because of following the buffalo. So one, our house that we lived in was called a teepee. And the teepee was uh, made out of the buffalo hide. It, um, the women would skin it, take off all of the um, hair off the buffalo, and then cure the hide, and then sew it together to make the um, teepee. You could always tell where someone lived in the tribe by the, what was on their teepee because they, we painted our teepees. Uh, a lot of times, if you wanted to find somebody, you would look outside the teepee or on the teepee to see what symbols were there. And if they, they put a shield outside also that the men used uh, in battle, and they would hang their shields outside the teepee, and it would have their symbols or their colors on that item. The next thing I want to mention is the language. The language, um, We've, they've been doing historical research on it. Comes from the Taonian language group, which is which comes from the Aztecs. We, it is a difficult language. It's very guttural. Um, it's strong. Has powerful uh, pops in it. A lot of nasal that we have to use when we speak. It's very difficult to learn. But we only have right now on our language, we only have fifth, less than 50 fluent speakers. We do have a language um, group that we are trying to train our youth in order to say the language, but it is, um, it is concerning because we have so few of the elders to, to teach the language. So we are recording a lot of it now today. We um, learn or we taught our children uh, our history through stories. We had a mythical superhero called Sane Day. Sane Day was the one that whenever the Kiowas were coming out of a log, this is the creation, beginning of the creation story, they were coming out of the log and Sane, Sane Day would tap the log and the people would each come out. Well, a lady who was pregnant got stuck in the log, and so the rest of the Kiowas were not able to come out of that log. And so that's why they explained uh, the reason of why our tribe is so small. Sane Day taught us about the good, the bad, the evil, and we would tell those stories at night in the teepee during the winter time because it was, you know, there wasn't a whole lot you could do, so the children were taught lessons of morality, of the right and wrong through those stories. And we call them Sane Day stories. Sane Day was a trickster. He tried to fool, and he got into all kinds of trouble half the time. So he was a, a, a funny guy uh, that taught important lessons to us, and that's the way we learned. Oh, uh -huh.